Israel and Hamas, the militant Palestinian Islamist group that controls Gaza, continue to fight despite international efforts to broker a ceasefire. This is the third time Israel and Hamas have engaged in intensive battle since Israel's cast-led operation in 2009. The current round of fighting has already gone on longer and produced more Palestinian and Israeli casualties than both previous rounds. Here are three things to know. First, while neither Israel nor Hamas sought this fight right now, both are in no rush to end it. Indeed, their ceasefire demands have gone up as their fighting has intensified, beyond what either side can easily offer the other. Hamas wants Gaza lifted from economic and movement strictures that have been put into place mainly by Israel and Egypt, and Israel wants to deprive Hamas of any political or economic benefit from the fighting and to see Hamas's rocket inventory and underground tunnels removed. They both need to be able to point to gains to justify the pain that they have incurred. It will be unfeasible to come to an agreement that simply returns the parties to where they were before this fighting erupted. The second thing to know is that this conflict is not isolated or self-contained. It's part of a broader Middle Eastern power struggle. It posits Hamas and its supporters, Qatar and Turkey on one side, and Israel, with the tacit support of Egypt and most Arab League members on the other. Most Arab countries decry the death of well over a thousand Palestinian civilians in Gaza. But they don't want to see the Islamist Hamas or their backers in Doha and Ankara emerge politically triumphant. This explains the widespread opposition to Secretary of State John Kerry's recent ceasefire proposal. Many in Israel and the Sunni Arab world saw it as tilting towards the Islamists. The third thing to know about the Israel-Hamas conflict is that there's no one broker that can bridge the divide between the two sides. The United States, Europe, and the United Nations all maintain strong ties to Israel and the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, but none of them has the political contact with or leverage over Hamas. In past rounds of fighting, Egypt could be counted upon to broker a deal between the two parties. But Egypt today is implacably opposed to Hamas, an organization it sees as a mere extension of its own banned Muslim Brotherhood. Ironically, the only party positioned to negotiate with both Israel and Hamas is Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. But right now he has little to offer either side as an incentive to end the violence. The fighting between Israel and Hamas is likely to continue until either Israel or Hamas changes their demands. Otherwise, an effective third party will be needed to put together an understanding that allows the warring parties to credibly justify all the death and destruction to their own people.